This is the Understand Pharmacodynamics Better series. In the next part, I'm going to go into agonists, partial agonists, and antagonists. And a light bulb is just a very intuitive way of visualizing the magnitude of an effect that occurs downstream from a receptor binding. So to be able to understand agonists and partial agonists and antagonists, you have to have a good grasp on efficacy. And efficacy in this context isn't referring to the effectiveness of the drug per se, or the, the clinical effect. Rather, it's referring to the ability of the drug receptor to produce a maximal functional response. So I wanna make a graph to help us visualize this. So on the x-axis, I'm gonna put dose or the concentration, and on the y-axis, I'm gonna have the effect or the activity of the receptor. But before I jump into agonists, I wanna talk about constitutive activity. And constitutive activity is just a fancy way of saying that even before a receptor is bound by a drug, it still has some activity. So for example, in the cyclic AMP or CAMP secondary messenger system, if there was a receptor that utilizes that, even before the drug is bound, there's still some cyclic AMP being made. But instead of using cyclic AMP, I wanna use light bulbs to show the, the effect that these receptors are having. So let's hook up this receptor, which is not bound by any drug or any ligand, and see what happens to the light bulb. And we can see that the light bulb has just a little bit of light. Even though that there's nothing hooked up to the receptor, it's still having effects and creating some, some light. So different dose effects curves show this differently, but it's important to point out that zero on this curve is not zero effects, but rather the baseline of constitutive activity. So it's the baseline of activity that occurs in the receptor when nothing's bound, but there's still activity there. So now moving on to full agonists. A full agonist produces the maximal response that a system is capable of. So when the receptor is bound by a full agonist and we hook it up to the light bulb, we see that the light bulb is emitting the maximum amount of light that it can emit. And one thing that I think is not that intuitive, but important to make a note of, is that full agonist has full efficacy. So it's able to produce the maximum effect capable of the system. But this says nothing about its potency. So a drug can have a very low potency in that it, it requires a very high dose, but it's still capable of having being a full agonist because it produces the full effect of the system. And it also can have a low affinity. Affinity is more how tightly it binds the receptor. So it can bind very loosely, but still generate the full effect. And I'll be creating videos for affinity and for potency, which will probably help you give a better intuitive grasp to the differences of these concepts. So this brings us to a partial agonist. And a partial agonist can never achieve the maximum response that the system's capable of because its efficacy is lower than that of a full agonist. So when we hook the partial agonist up to a light bulb, we can see that it's emitting more light compared to when nothing's bound, but it's not emitting quite the same amount of light as the full agonist. So as we were saying before, when a drug binds, a receptor makes a conformational change, so it changes its shape. So the partial agonist might change it to a shape that, that is able to produce an effect, but it's not quite as effective as the full agonist because it doesn't change the shape fully. And there's another video that explains this in more detail, but I just want to point out that a partial agonist acts as an antagonist in the presence of a full agonist. And that occurs because they're competing for the same receptor. So imagine if you were to take some full light bulbs and change them to dimmer light bulbs. The effect is it's gonna increase the overall light of the system. And again, I wanna point out that efficacy here is not referring to clinical efficacy or the effectiveness of the drug. It's referring to the efficacy of the receptor. So the next thing this brings us to is antagonists. And antagonists are drugs that have affinity but no efficacy for the receptor. So one thing I feel like isn't that intuitive is that antagonists on their own don't really do anything. What they do is they either block the main sites that another agonist or partial agonist can't bind, or they bind to what's called an allosteric site, which just means a site different from the active site, and make it so that another agonist or partial agonist can't bind. So overall, antagonists uh, return the receptor back to the state of when nothing is bound. So when we hook our light bulb to it, we can see that it has the exact same amount of light emitting as when nothing's bound or constitutive activity. So just to emphasize the point, an antagonist won't do anything if there's no other drugs or ligands available, but it has a negative effect when, when they are. So this brings us to our last guy on the agonist spectrum, and that's the inverse agonist. And the way an inverse agonist works is that it binds the receptor and removes the constitutive activity. So when we hook a light bulb up to it, we see that it's actually emitting less light than if absolutely nothing was bound. So let's look at the dose effect curve to quickly summarize everything we've been talking about. In blue, we see the full agonist, which produces the maximum response the system's capable of. Next, we see the partial agonist in maroon, and it's, even as we increase the dose, it's not capable of reaching the full effect, even at full occupancy. Next, we see the constitutive activity, which we define as zero on this curve. And the zero on this curve is the same as the antagonist curve, because the constitutive activity is the minimum activity that occurs when nothing's bound, and the antagonist makes it so that nothing else can be bound. Last, we have the inverse agonist, which is red on the curve, and we see that its effect is even lower than zero, 
um, which we define as the constitutive activity because it removes the activity that occurs when nothing's bound.